Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and the name of this channel is S. Dave. And if you'd like to ask me a question, send that question to askdave at arrl.org, and it will come directly to me. This question is from R. Scott Schubon. I'm going to take it as that. Um, K3MRZ. And he's got some questions here broken down into three different questions. So let's just take this a little at a time. Uh, he is going to be taking his general exam soon and has his eye on an ICOM 7300, which is, by the way, the reference uh, radio for our reference station uh, that you can see at decastler.com slash reference. Um, it says, watch several of your videos while researching antenna options. He says he has several acres, which is nice for antenna owners. You can put up some large loops and even a beverage, uh, or hmm, if you've got the telephone poles, a rhombic. Uh, but all the diagrams and pictures of antennas seem to assume they are mounted above level ground. That is true. Now, my ground here is fairly level, although it slopes, uh, but a lot of people have gullies or hills or whatever that they may want. So, now, the uh, most modeling done at the amateur level for antenna usage assumes flat ground. The reason for that is because the free software from the government that models uh, antenna behavior is... Uh, designed for level ground. That's NEC or National Electromagnetic Code number two. Now there is a number four, but the folks at the University of California who maintain that code uh, seem to think that uh, they're going to get a percentage at a very nominal fee of over $350, and which is anything but nominal for a radio amateur. So almost all of the things that you see, like EZNEC2, which is available for free now, and it uses the number two code, which assumes flat ground. So what do you do? Do you want to pay the extra for the modeling precision in non-flat or convoluted ground? I would say no. The reason why is because of the old phrase in engineering. All models are wrong, but some are useful. Okay, now that means that even the uh, easy NEC2 is going to be wrong, but it will give some very useful information. You can pay the extra amount and, and figure out how to model the ground in there, but why don't you just put up the antenna and see how it works. Okay, he says, my property is almost all sloped to varying degrees with much of the yard on a 20 degree or higher downward slope from the house. How would this affect my strategy for selecting and mounting a dipole and or vertical for HF? When the ground slopes and you've got an antenna here, it will tend to push more of the radiation in this direction. Okay, slopes the other way, goes the other way. Now, I say tends to because it doesn't necessarily do all of it. Uh, it will, if you've got your antenna mounted at the top, it will bring the radiation down a little bit, which can be a good thing for DX. Now, uh, for a situation like that, you can mount a dipole if you wish. You could even mount the dipole down the hill. We would call that a sloper. Or you can put in a vertical, you can put in any antenna that you want. Uh, if possible, I would suggest putting it in near the top of the hill or on your roof or, or whatever. It says, two, off the back of my two-story house is a one-story addition with a metal roof. If I run a dipole or end fed from the two-story peak, it will pass over the metal roof at a height of about 10 to 12 feet before it clears the addition. Would this be a problem? Well, remember rule number one with antennas is that everything affects everything. So, 
Go ahead and do it because it will affect the pattern a bit, but at 10 to 12 feet for that particular portion of the antenna, you'll probably be fine. You may not even notice on the air that you're not getting signals from a certain area or that another area happens to be particularly strong. I would not worry about that. Go ahead and run that antenna. Finally, my nearby garage stands about 25 feet high with a metal roof. Because it's a gambrel type roof design, I have to look up that word gambrel. That's a, that's a 75 cent word. Um, the metal wraps from the peak of about 25 feet down to the eaves at about 8 feet high. Will this present any problems like signal obstruction or reflection? Of course, it will reflect your signal. Uh, but notice that that roof is not all one solid piece. It was put up there in multiple pieces which are screwed or nailed down. And the thing is that sometimes they do not have uh, a good enough contact with each other to count as a single reflector. So, uh, like I said, just go ahead and put it up. Um, if an antenna is mounted at a height of between 8 and 25 feet, or will my antenna need to be above 25 feet to reduce the obstruction presented by the garage? It's really hard to say. Now, it is possible with uh, the higher-priced uh, antenna modeling programs to go ahead and model that sort of thing in and structures. And a professional radio station or government or something like that would model that. But probably the easiest way for you to model that is just put up the antenna and see how well it performs. If you don't like it where it is, move the antenna, see if there's any change. Uh, the big metal roofs can act as a reflector. In fact, uh, Bell Telephone, uh, when they were building their microwave uh, backbone across the nation with all those microwave towers, when they got into mountainous terrain, what they found, and there's one down in Silverton not far from here, they would put up what looked like a billboard. Now, the billboard actually was just a piece of metal, uh, well, several pieces of metal, and they acted as reflectors so that they could take a signal from one town, reflect it down into a valley to get to another town to provide telephone communications. Now, almost all telephone communications these days is over fiber optic cables, but there are still a few of those big billboard type reflectors around. So yeah, reflection can work. Uh, but for HF, you're talking about a wavelength, usually, that's either on the order of or bigger than your garage or house. And so these just appear in the near field and may or may not uh, help in constructing the far field of the antenna. My advice to you is to try it. Just get something in the air. Don't let perfection stand in the way of good enough, okay? You want to get something in the air, get going. As you get more experience, you'll experiment with other things. So, Scott, this is what I would suggest for you. Um, I hope that you have uh, good luck. And for anyone who would like to submit a question, askdave at arrl.org will come straight to me. Uh, or... Uh, you can send it via snail mail. There's a couple of different approaches uh, in the screens at the end of this video. Also, I would ask you to please subscribe. Subscribe helps YouTube understand that this is a channel that people want to watch. Please share. Please click the uh, button that says that uh, you'll accept notifications for this video. And until we next meet, 73.